Hey guys, what's up? We are back with another video today, and today I am doing my Miami NCAA 2020 prediction. So as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you enjoy these videos. Right now, as I am recording this video, I am three subscribers away from my 75 subscriber goal. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the like button down below. Comment your thoughts and opinions as always. Once I hit 75 subscribers, I'll be doing two viewer suggested videos. So make sure that you put your suggestions down in the comment section down below. I have one suggestion right now. I need one more. Uh, once I hit 75 subscribers, those two videos will be coming out. Um, then... Um, as always, make sure you do that. And then, um, not only am I doing a Miami NCAA prediction, I have started and almost finished all of my NCAA ACC predictions. Um, I am next going to be on to the Big Ten, Big 12, Pac-12, SEC, uh, some of the independents in BYU, Liberty, Notre Dame, and uh, Army. You have some power uh, group of five teams and uh, App State, UAB, Boise State, Cincinnati, Memphis, and UCF. If you have any other suggested videos that you want me to do, I put them down in the suggestion. I may do an ECU or a Middle Tennessee State video, um, according to Lincoln Stevens. I may do one of those, so make sure that you subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell for so much more content coming out. So Miami has a second-year head coach in Manny Diaz coming out. Last year, they finished 6-7 and seven with a disappointing uh, end of the year with losses to FIU and uh, Louisiana Tech. Um, so quickly, I'm going to go through their commitments and uh, returners, key losses and key uh, return, uh, returners. Then uh, for key losses, your biggest loss is a linebacker and preseason first-team All-American Shaq Quarterman. Um, he was supposed to be one of the best linebackers in the nation last year. He was a little bit disappointing to where he um, lived up last year, but we'll see whether he, uh, whether Miami will be able to replace his talent. Then you also have DJ uh, Dallas, running back, uh, your top running back. You lose him. You lose um, a wide receiver in KJ Osborne. Um, and then quickly going to rank of returning um, starters by percentage. So this is done by percentage of returning production by ESPN. They are 82nd in offense, 106th in defense, and 97th overall, which is not really good. But then the other thing that I have to say is that you return your very best player on defense and Greg Rousseau. So I, even though you lose a lot of production on the defensive end, you also have a lot of production coming back with a 15 sack guy. So I, I don't know if they messed up that or not. Um, you have... DJ Ivy, a uh, defensive back coming in, and then you have Jared Williams, a quarterback, uh, returning, and then you also have the transfer from Houston, DeAndre King, uh, coming in. So we'll see whether he starts or Jared Wilson or Williams. I'm sorry. Um, commitment wise, you have zero five stars, ten four stars, and eleven three stars. And let's get started with a regular preview. Um, so you start the 2020 season off with a home game against Temple. Um, I think that Temple is a decent program. Um, I'm pretty sure Manny Diaz is from Temple. I could be wrong about that, but um, I think he coached at Temple previously. Um, so I think you'll get a win there, but I think it'll be a little bit closer than you want. Home game against Wagner. I think you'll win this game by a lot. You played Bethune Cookman last year. You beat him 63 to nothing. We'll see if you can continue that kind of streak of beating teams uh, by a lot that you really should. Uh, but then you also had a game last year where you played Central Michigan and only beat them 17-12, to so we'll see. Um, then you have a home game against UAB. This is going to be a really close game, I feel like. This is 50-50 um, for me, to be completely honest. Um, last year, UAB played App State in a bowl game. Um, I'm pretty sure the R&B Carrier Bowl um, down in New Orleans. Um, that was a really fun bowl game to watch. I had so much fun watching that game. I think that that will be a fun game to watch and a fun game to play in. Um, I think that Miami will win this game just by a smidge, just because the talent gap is pretty big. Um, maybe uh, UAB will be able to stay in this game, but I have not done that much research on UAB in particular. Um, my preview of UAB is in later, uh, later in August, so I need to do a little bit more research on them. But I think that UAB is not a good enough team to be able to beat Miami yet. Then you have an away game against Michigan State. The only reason why I have Miami winning this game is because Tom Izzo left. And when you have a first-year head coach um, in a really crazy situation like this, 
I would not be surprised if you see um, a team like Miami be able to beat a team that they usually wouldn't in Michigan State. Um, so I think that they'll win that game. I think it will be a closer game than it, um, uh, a closer game, but I think that Miami will be able to win this game and win it pretty easily. Um, then you have a home game against Pitt. I think that you'll win this game by a small um, uh, ten point margin. Uh, you played at Pitt last year. You beat them sixteen to twelve. Um, two years ago, or three years ago, I'm I'm not sure which one it was. Pitt upset at Miami in the last week of the season before the ACC championship game. Maybe they do this again and up, upset them then, but I'm not going to be able to predict that, so I think that um, Miami will be able to win that game there. Then you have an away game. Against, excuse me. Uh, away game against Wake Forest. I think that you'll be able to win that game there. I think it'll be by a smaller margin. You didn't play him last year, but I think that um, Wake Forest is just, with the loss of Jamie Newman, with the loss of a lot of their talent um, on the offensive and defensive side of the ball, they have so many losses that I would not be surprised if they fall more towards a 4-8 and eight or 3-9 and nine team rather than just a barely bowl eligible team or like a 7-8 nine win team this year um then you have a bye week and then you play a home game against north carolina i think that this game is going to determine the acc coastal division and who gets to be gets to get beaten by clemson um but i think that north carolina will be able to edge out this game by a small margin i think that this will be a fantastic game to watch but i think when miami um goes into the big games uh for their division they seem to do pretty well um we'll see um in 2017, I think it was, they played a home game against Virginia Tech. Um, I wouldn't be surprised um, it, like that in that game where they won. I would not be surprised if they win this game here, but I think that they won't win this game uh, just yet. But then you have an away game against uh, Virginia. I think that you'll be able to win this game here with, again, a lot of loss of talent on that team. You played Virginia last year at home, beat them 17 to 9. So I think even though this is an away game this year, I think that you'll be able to win this game. Um I think even by a bigger margin, um especially coming off a tough North Carolina game, I think that you'll be motivated to try to finish out the season with a couple of wins. Then you have a home game against your in-state rivals Florida State. You played at Florida State uh 27 beat them 27-10. I think this is going to be by an even bigger margin this year. Um, I think Florida State is just such a dumpster fire right now of a program um, compared to what they usually are. Then you have an away game against Virginia Tech. I think that you win this game by a small margin. You played home against Virginia Tech, uh, beat them thirty or uh, lost to them thirty five forty two. But I think this year will be a year where you're able to beat them by a small margin. Uh, but I think that but with both teams uh, improving on both sides of the ball and having a second-year head coach. Um, I think that Miami will be able to edge out the victory here. Then you have an away game against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, you lost to 21-28 last year, but I think uh, that was just kind of a fluke loss. Same with the FIU loss. Same with the Louisiana Tech loss. There's, these are games that they should not have lost that they did. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. You have close games to Miami or to North Carolina and Florida last year. So Miami seasons could have turned around really quick with wins against Florida, North Carolina, a uh, close game against Virginia Tech. Maybe you win that game. Maybe you, you could have won this season undefeated easily. Um, it was just a lot of the tide turned against you in some of the games that you shouldn't have. Then you have a home game against Duke to finish out the year. Um, I think that you were able to win that game there. I think that Miami finishes the game, uh, finishes the year eleven and one. Oh, I forgot to uh, mention this. Um, the North Carolina in the North Carolina preview, I said that Miami was going to beat North Carolina. I made um, an error in that one. I am so sorry. I meant to say that Miami was going to lose to North Carolina. I am so sorry, but if you want to uh, double check me on that, you can. Uh, I'm sorry, but either way, I think North Carolina will be able to edge Miami out for the ACC Coastal Division with both teams being 11-1, and but Miami losing to North Carolina at home. I think that they will be able to, North Carolina will be able to make it into the ACC Coastal uh, Conference Championship game. 
or the championship game, ACC championship game. As always, make sure you hit the two videos down below and hit the subscribe button up here. As always, have a great day. Bye.